My great love of AFL football started when I was about six years old. And I had a, my brother who was 15 months older than me and we'd do kick to kick in the backyard and I guess you could say it started when I was about six and I've had a great love of AFL football ever since and I've always wanted to play the game ever since I was a small kid. Hmm. I fell in love with the Bulldogs again when I was about six years old. Um, it was, uh, my father was a policeman and he was stationed at Footscray and he wanted me to barrack for the Shinboners, North Melbourne. And being the little rebel that I am, I just decided the blue and white colours I didn't like, I like red, white and blue. So my brother and I, at the age of six and seven, we made a pact that we were barrack for Footscray as it was known then. And I have barrack for the Footscray, Western Bulldogs ever since. And my role with the Bulldogs in the, the senior role that I undertook started in 2004. Well, actually, it goes back even further, it goes back to 1996 when the dogs were on their knees and we were lacking membership and very small membership. We were practically insolvent and we needed to uh, formulate a business plan going forward. That was in 1996 and we formed that and I was the only woman at the time. And um, then David Smallwin came in and became president and did an outstanding job for 16 years and then he handed it on to Peter Gordon but at that time I was already on the board. I joined in 2004 and the first job they gave me when I joined the board was the redevelopment of the Witten Oval, a $32 million redevelopment which was a very difficult job particularly in the west of Melbourne and that was my task. Welcome to the Western Bulldogs. So I worked on that project with the CEO at the time. We worked very closely together for eight years. We've got our redevelopment and more. Uh, we've got fantastic membership now. We'll probably be free of debt by the end of this year. When I joined the board, we had 11 million in debt. So being vice president, uh, it was quite an achievement. I was very um, humbled to be the vice president. At the time when I was asked, I was fighting for my life in intensive care um, and it came down to two, Peter and I, Peter Gordon and myself and in the best interest of the club, it was best that Peter took it on and he's doing a great job and I'm now still heavily involved with the dogs and will be for the rest of my life. There was just no avenue for women to play football when I was growing up. At 15, my father decided enough was enough. I was playing against boys of 15, and boys of 15 are really young men, and they were tackling hard, and I was tackling pretty hard, and I was getting injured, and Dad said, enough is enough, you've got to hang up your boots. So at 15, I had to hang up my boots, and it's something that stayed with me forever. It's something that should never have happened, and I always wanted to see young women be, uh, be given the opportunity to play the game that they loved, if that's what they chose to play. So my love affair, and in promoting women with, with football, I guess you could say started back when I was six. Then when I hung up my boots at 15, I had this burning desire within me to say, this is not right, this, should, this shouldn't happen. Women should be given the same opportunity as men. And of course, that's been something I've been driving, I guess you could say that agenda forever. I didn't have the resources or the know-how or the, didn't have the contacts at that time. But I'd been watching from afar a long time, seeing football develop with women. And I don't think a lot of people realise that football, women's football started in 1915, when the men went to war and the women stepped up and joined the, the men's team. So really it started in 1915, and even before then, but officially in Fremantle, Western Australia, it started. So it's just, I always say the first hundred years is the hardest. So it's now up and running and uh, it's just amazing. Well, the very first game I was invited to the official function. I'd been waiting this, for this moment for 55 years. And we had the official function, as my father would say, Sue, you don't go for the, the food, you go for the, for the football, because I love football. So a lot of the people went off to the Carlton side, and I decided to go to Collingwood, to, because obviously of my relationship with Mo and lots of the young women in Collingwood. And I wanted to sit on my own, and people kept coming and sitting next to me, you know, wanted to talk to me but I wanted to sit and experience that moment because I'd waited so, so long. In fact, I almost get teary even thinking about it. And I kept moving and I moved and guess where I finished up with the Collingwood cheer squad. They left me alone and they were very gracious in defeat. And when that ball went up the first time, the tears just appeared and I thought, it's happened. Women now 
will get this opportunity that they, right, they rightly deserve. And to see 26,000 people there and to repeat it again the next night with a lockout at the Witten Oval and all the families turning up, that meant so much to me. I, 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 it's very hard to put into words just how I felt. I think the tears explained it all that first night. Mm. Absolutely, I would have wanted to play. I'd need to be good enough. I know I would have worked hard. Uh, I thought I was a pretty good footballer. My father said I was. Uh, he always used to say I was better than my brother, but Dad was an umpire and a policeman, so he knew everything. And Richard, um, my brother, he, he used to love playing footy. He played with the boys at uh, school where he went and afterwards he played, but I would have definitely, absolutely played and I would have been there on the doorstop, you know, the knocking on the door as soon as uh, training had started because I loved the game. My father used to say I'd eat a football. I love it so much and I watch all games of football, not just my own team. Absolutely in the centre. I always like to play in centre. I like to be in the action under and down there getting dirty. I used to love playing in the centre. I knew I could make a difference in the centre because I was tough. <laughs>